Every one of us loves to do things perfectly. When you attend a function, you want it to be done proper. Sometimes when Muslims make or arrange things, don't you agree they don't do things properly? Don't you agree they don't do things properly sometimes? Don't you agree they don't do things properly sometimes? It's a fact. So we try to please Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ مِنْ أَحَدِكُمْ إِذَا عَمِلَ عَمَلًا أَنْ يُتْقِنَهُ Allah loves from you that if you are to do anything do it perfectly, do it properly, be proud about what you're doing, your work, your activity. Make sure you do a good job, something professional, something when people look at, they want to be a part of. So this should change the mindset. To be a good Muslim, you need to be not a perfectionist, but you need to aim to perfection. And we will probably get somewhere near. Nothing will be perfect, but we need to do a good job. We need to make sure that we make people feel like they are definitely part of a broader family. If we don't, we chase people away from Allah. And today we want to talk about our connection with Allah. We want to talk about what Allah wants from us and how we can perfect that connection. How we can perfect our deeds because the Almighty has definitely chosen for us a certain path. He wants us to worship Him and Him alone. Subhanallah. He has created us and guess what? We are going to go back to Him. I speak to people who don't have faith at all and every time they get stuck when we say, where did you come from before you were born? Where were you? Just like you thought when you were in the wombs of your mothers and as you grew as a fetus that perhaps there is nowhere to go now and things are just going to come to an end because I can't even move anymore, right? In the belly of your mom, in the womb of your mother, as time passed and you grew and you became bigger and bigger all you could see was this world around you known as the womb with this fluid all over you used to swim the ocean when you started but the ocean became not even a river a little droplet at a time to you because you couldn't even move and you thought to yourself that you know what I am probably going to end here at that time a huge pop happened and what happened you <gasps> I just came out into this huge place. Wow, I didn't imagine it existed. I didn't even believe that there would be such a big existence outside the womb of my mom. I didn't even know it was just a womb. But guess what? Allah told you that way back. The same happens to us. When, we're, when we grow older, when we are terminally ill, may Allah give shifa to all those who are sick and ill. Say, Amin. May Allah truly grant cure to those who are struggling with sickness. Amin. And may Allah have mercy upon those who've passed on. As you get older, terminal illness, something happens. You know what? Yes, it's a frustration. I tell you what, your hope in the mercy of Allah keeps you going and it should keep you going. Your hope in the fact that you're definitely not going to be abandoned should keep you going. Your hope in the fact that you have a merciful Lord should keep you going. Your hope in paradise must keep you going no matter what you've done. Develop a link with the one who made you in the first place because you know you're going to go back to him. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And one day, as you think it's all coming to an end, I can't breathe anymore. I can't breathe anymore. <laughs> Pop, what happens? <gasps> wow, what a great akhirah there is. Much bigger, much better than the dunya I was in. Just like when you were in the womb, you transferred into what was known as the earth. For you, it was something amazing. No one could have explained it to you when you were in the womb. And this is why I tell people who say that, you know, when I'm in Jannah, I don't want this and I want this and I want that and I say concentrate on getting to Jannah. Once you get to paradise, you will love it. And you, whatever you had on earth, don't worry, don't worry. To that standard, it's not going to be there. Subhanallah. No way. You want a car? There's no cars. No way. Not these ones. Subhanallah. So you mean I'm not going to get my Lamborghini that I was wishing for all the time? No, unfortunately, it's not in Jannah. You know why? When you get there, you're going to see something. It's like 
The fluid that you have in the womb of your mom and you wish, oh, I wish I had that protein, it really helped me. And I wish I had that little piece of sugar, it really helped me. Once you get out, that protein and sugar is not there the way it was. Completely, totally different. So you start thinking, gosh, was I even thinking of that protein and sugar? The same will apply to us. You say, I want this in Jannah and that in Jannah. When you get to Jannah, you're going to think, gosh, was I even thinking of those things? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. But there is a question in our quest to get into paradise and to want certain things. Sometimes we want them so badly that we forget you need to develop a relationship here with your maker in order for you to get there. That relationship's not difficult. It requires dedication. Perfect your deeds. Perfect your relationship with Allah. We read salah. We fulfill our prayer, don't we? We try. T-R-Y. That's a very, very important word. Try is something none of us can ignore. I must try every day to stay away from what will displease my maker and to do that which will ultimately please him. I'm weak. I'm a human being. I falter. I make mistakes. But the Lord above says, do you know what? Don't worry. I'm the most merciful. No matter what you've done, come plug in once again. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Tell my worshippers who have transgressed against themselves. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Who's talking? Allah. Whose words are they? Allah. What is he saying? Don't lose hope. We know what you've done. We know what you get up to. We know your weakness. But keep trying. And come to us. And keep seeking forgiveness. Because we know that seeking forgiveness ultimately means you believe in Allah. If you say, oh Allah, forgive me, I was wrong, I did bad. If you felt bad upon a sin, it shows you believe in Allah. That's why you felt bad. If you didn't believe, you wouldn't have felt bad. So if you commit a sin and you think to yourself, gosh, I shouldn't have done this. What did I achieve by this? That's a good sign. The good sign is not the sin part of it, but the good sign is the fact that you regretted it. What are you doing? You're perfecting yourself. You're perfecting your relationship with Allah by seeking forgiveness of Allah. And don't let the comments of people make you become further away from Allah because people will comment. They will say things. They will say everything and anything. You could be outwardly the most pious looking person and they will say, look at her. She thinks she's a little god. Astaghfirullah. A'udhu billah. Yeah, they'll pass comments. Look at the guy. Look at him. He thinks he's what? Look at this extremist. Those are the comments you get. If, you, if the people's bad comments affect you to become a bad person in your, your own comments to them or in your own attitude, then you've lost. But if you can perfect yourself, if you can mend your relationship, not just with Allah, even with others, you will teach them that no matter how badly you have commented, I'm still going to smile at you. I'm still going to look at you and say, hi or hello or salamu alaikum. Subhanallah. Imagine I make dua for peace for you when you're not in peace. It's a blessing. I can see you at war with yourself from your comments. And I'm saying, Salaamu Alaikum, which means may peace be on you. You probably need it more than ever before right now. But we don't look at it that way. We get angry. We get excited. So we become bad. We drop because others have dropped. Why drop? Are you not high in your character and conduct? When I say high, I mean, you know, of a high level. <laughs> I hope weed is not legalized here, by the way. <laughs> and by the way, there's a huge difference between social weed and medicinal weed. I hope you know that, right? One is taj weed. That's okay. And the other one is weed weed, as in smoking weed. That's not okay. But getting to the reality, my brothers and sisters, you develop your, your character, your conduct. It will show when you're made angry, when people look at you and you think they're looking down on you. That's the moment when you've got to rise and shine, right? Yes. And you've got to show them, no matter what you think of me, I know who I am. My relationship with Allah is going to be developed. And I'm not going to be 
feeling like I'm useless because Allah told me I'm not useless. For as long as I'm trying. For as long as I'm trying. And that you have to be truthful with yourself. Because you can't say, oh, I, I'm trying, you know, I'm, I'm trying hard. And you, you've got the bottle in your hand and you're actually drinking like, I don't know what. That's not a trial. Come on, you've got to drop the bottle and say, I'm trying, really. And I seek forgiveness in Allah and I'm going to read, I'm going to fulfill my prayer. I tell you what, prayer is a cornerstone. It's a pillar of Islam. Why? I promise you the Quran speaks loud and clear. <laughs> if you fulfill that prayer correctly and properly, it will stop you and create a barrier between you and immorality. It will stop you from sin and evil. That's what the Quran says. So if your salah is not in order, you're going to have a lot of other issues. So perfect your relationship with Allah by perfecting your prayer. Many of us pray, don't we? Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, I went to a certain area, a certain part of Nigeria. And I must tell you, I was so, so impressed by the amount of people who actually get up before Salat al-Fajr for Salat al-Tahajjud. And I'm thinking to myself, this is a corner of Africa. This is where there are poor, poor people who probably don't have as much as we do. And their connection with Allah is so powerful, they would embarrass me with, in my connection with Allah. And this is what motivates me. Do you know what? I promise you, when I am sleeping, early morning, I tell myself, no, man, I can't let those guys even do more than I'm doing. And I get up, subhanAllah, because I've seen it with my eyes. And this is why I say, you want to perfect yourself? Look at those who are doing much better. And just tell yourself, I'm going to get there. Just like in business, we have role models. And we have people who have earned, and they are driving fa fancy cars, and they're... Everything, it's we're becoming so materialistic that we're forgetting Allah. It's not bad to have some good things in life. No, it's not bad at all. But it must not compromise your relationship with Allah. So if you are trying, fulfill your prayer to start with.